a special package arrive, and this is going to be a vintage tool unboxing. Now, I started to open this yesterday in my excitement because the first thing that when Mrs. W brings these things into my office and I feel that they're heavy and they come from subscribers, I know that it's going to be something really cool inside. Um, so I, I tore the top or the box open and I thought, no, wait a minute, we're gonna unbox this together. So this is from my, my, uh, my good friend David, new friend David in, uh, in South Carolina, uh, sent me an email a while back and said, hey, I've got some, some special heirloom tools. Uh, I wanna send them out to you. Um, I want you to have them. So question always comes up, what do I do with all these tools? Because you know, I, I already have you know, a pretty good collection for myself. Um, I, I don't uh, keep all of them. And, and that's sometimes uh, some of the folks that send things um, um, you know, are, are not super pleased with that. But I want you to know what I do oftentimes is I'll also I'll clean them up, I'll restore them or sharpen them, um, and then I give them to, I give, I give a lot of the way to the young boys at our local church, um, different people, people that come by. So just kind of know that if you do send me things that, you know, if I do have multiples of it, I'm not a hoarder, I'm not a collector, and I, I would rather get it in working order and send it out to someone. So enough of that. Let's, uh, let's jump into it and see what's in this box. It's big and it's heavy. All right, gracing the gracing us today is the very happy to have returned Benchmade 940. How about we slide this over to the side here? We'll slide this here and we'll just bring things out one at a time. Go get yourself a cup of coffee, push pause. We are going to have, this is, a, this is a heavy one. We're going to have a lot of fun with this today. So what do we have here? We've got a, a leather case. Oh, I'm just so, it's just so, so excited. What in the world is this? Okay, I know this is cool. I know what this is. This is, this. it looks like a leather punch. This is like a, what in the world? This is def, okay, so there is a, some sort of a, a mandrel spur. My goodness, I don't know what, but here's the interesting thing is it's got a whole, it's got a, it's probably over a hundred of these things in there. What are these? Oh, these are, oh, it's a, it's a, it's a grommet tool. It's a grommet tool. That's what, with grommets, with a whole bunch of them. Well, you can't buy that off of Amazon, I'll bet. Okay, I'm starting to put this together here, so bear with me. I'm, we're just, we're learning together. So here's what I think. So if you wanted to put a big, a grommet, you know, like a grommet, this is actually really cool. This is really cool. If you wanted to uh, put a grommet in, um, let's say, canvas or in leather or something, here's what I, I, I think you're going to take this tool here and you're going to, you're going to punch a hole in it. And if I, if I, I'm willing to bet, look at that. Yep. That's the exact size hole right there. And then you're going to put, uh, this here has got some teeth on it that would, will mash out one will grab the leather or the material. The other will, will fold underneath of those, those deals there and, and make a grommet. And then once you have that placed, then you would set this in the mandrel here like this, and you will strike that down with a hammer and make a grommet. How, I mean, that is really, that is neat. That's what, I, that's what I'm not going to be giving away. We'll have to make something really cool with that. There's a whole bunch of them, and there must, there's hundreds of them in there. Look at that. Well, nicely done, David. I have never seen that before. That is a very welcome surprise. Boy, we're starting off on a, starting off on a high note here. Can it get any better? All right, we've got a plastic bag here with a pair of leather gloves inside. Oh, these are really nice. These are like Tillman. Uh, you know, I, I have needed a pair of gloves like these because I have the big, and they're even the, re they're the perfect size. Look at that. They're, uh, these are really nice. They're, uh, they're, they're, they're not, the gloves I have are for welding, uh, and they're, they're too heavy. You don't have any dexterity, but if you're handling some hot things, these are great. And to have two pair, to have a backup pair, Man, that is just great. And they're the perfect size. Thank you, David. Isn't that nice? They smell great. Those are nice gloves. I like that they're, they have really high cuffs on them. Oh, that, those, will be, those will definitely be used. All right, so we got, I know what this is. 
Well, this is just, just too exciting. Oh, how about that there? How did that get in there? Loctite 243. Of course, you know, that's always my favorite, Loctite 243. It's uh, something that every man should have in his toolbox. We'll put, actually, let's put that right here. Right there, so you all can enjoy it along with me. Okay, so here we have a, um, we have a non-restored ratcheting brace. That's a, that's a nice one. It's got the rosewood handles. There's a little crack there, but it's still, it's seized up. That might be an opportunity for us to do a restoration on there. The, um, the chuck, how's the chuck look? The chuck looks pretty good. Chuck is functioning. The ratcheting mechanism is good. It's, it's perfectly functional. It just needs a little bit of, this would be a good one to, to put in the de-rusting, in the de-rusting fluid. So that's pretty nice there. A nice, that's an old one too, an old brace with the rosewood handles. Are you guys having as much fun as I am here? I don't know where to start. Okay, there's a note. Well, we don't want to, we don't want to cheat. Let's, we'll save that for later in case we can't answer any questions. Well, this, we have something really big here. Oh, I, I think I know what this is. I think I definitely know what this is. And I actually have one of these, but I have um, the new version, the remanufactured one. Wouldn't it be something if this, if this was the original one? Oh, I think it is. I think there's no question. This is really interesting. So I have, uh, I have been using the, uh, this is a nail puller. This is a vintage slide hammer. This is an old one. A vintage slide hammer style nail puller uh, that I still use today. I, you saw me use it on the siding not too long ago. This is really nice. It's really, it's interesting um, having used the remanufactured one by Crescent. Um, and then handling an old one. I'll bet this one is twice the weight. Uh, I wonder if the quality, the quality, how, how, I'll have to try them together and see which one works better. But that's got a ton of weight to it. I mean, it's got some mass. You could really use that slide hammer action. The jaws are not uh, opening, but that's just because, oh, no, they are. They work fine. I was just pushing the wrong way. Um, but a little, it's in good shape. It doesn't have a lot of rust on it because I think it's been, um, it's had some sort of a coating on it, like an enamel of some sort. Yeah, that's really nice. I have never seen one. I've never seen an old one in person like this before, only in my, in my tool book uh, that Lou got me. That's really nice there. Boy, this is exciting. All right, so next we have, looks like we have a vintage pair of scissors. You know, it is hard to find quality scissors. They have, there was one, there, these old ones are, look at that. So these are a nice general purpose Nashville, Nashville made by the Arrow Company. I've not heard of these, they're quality. You can, oh, you can feel them. They're just like butter and they're not, and they're in their unrestored condition. That's really nice. Uh, th this is one of, boy, that's, that's a nice set. This is one of the, uh, um, I can't explain the feel, the, the feel of these. It has, it feels like quality, you know, when you, when you can just feel it. This is a great general purpose pair. I've got over there in the, well, you saw me trying to use some scissors. Not, we were, I don't remember what we were doing, that they weren't working very well. Uh, they're just those cheap Fisker scissors that once were good scissors and not so much anymore. Uh, but this is a pair that we can, you know, this would be a good opportunity for us to, I know that the Russian knife sharpener has a, um, a jig for sharpening scissors and I haven't used it, but we'll try, we'll try it out on there. But these are, these are nice. These would be my new shop scissors. I'll get rid of those crummy Fiskers and, and uh, keep these in here. But you need, th this is handy to have for, you can cut leather, you can cut canvas, you know, just I'm always grabbing them all the time. And I'm always lamenting the fact that how terrible they were. So that's, that's a nice set of scissors right there. What in the world is this? We might be, might be stymied here. Okay, so this, uh, this says on it, it says, made in USA, BMC Manufacturing, Panther, Birmingham, number nine. I'm gonna have to get my, you know, I think all it is, I think it's, I think it's like 
the grandfather of the robo grip. It's an adjustable, it's an adjustable plier with a plastic in there. Maybe or bakelite or something. That's pretty old. That's really that's pretty clever. You know, that's look at the way the steel is laminated there. You can see right there, it's just like a a robo grip. A robo grip is a pair of pliers, kind of channel locks with springs on them that you automatically adjust to the to the fastener that you want to tight, tighten. And that's what these kind of do. So they they open up. It's like a pair of vice grips that doesn't lock. That's interesting. I've never seen anything like that before. Good condition too. All right, let's see what else we got here. Oh, we've got a folding ruler. These are nice. I have one of these. Unfortunately, oh, and a file. Well, that's a good, that's a, so this is a, I've never seen a file like this before. Look how tiny it is. It's a, um, it's a very fine file. This is a handy file for doing, um, for sharpening. It's very fine. It's got the um, concave on one side, the rounded on one side for doing grooves and everything. This would be a good file uh, for filing small rasps. Uh, or not rasp, but gouges. Uh, fits in the hand nice. That's really interesting. Quality too. It looks like it's a. Oh, I can't read my. my I should have brought my reading glasses. Here we have. Uh, now before tape measures, before we had tape, you know, a regular Stanley tape measures, we had the uh, carpenters would pack these folding rules. You know, and they'd wear the apron here, and they, you always have that in your pocket when you need to measure. You would fold this. This one's. This one's beautiful. It looks like it's how many inches do we have there? It's 24 inches, so it'd be two feet. Uh, I, I'm gonna I'm gonna keep this here because I have one of these that my father-in-law gave me, but the numbers on them are so dark that I haven't been able to use them. I can't read it very well. And look at the look at the brass, the craftsmanship, and all of the, the segmented lines in there. That is nice. What a beautiful thing. No metric, as you'll as as you'll. Will please you, I know, as it, as it pleases me. But I made my master rule. I'm going to keep that right here. I'll use that um, on my workbench. Wow, what do we have here? It looks like we have a sh maybe a sheath knife. Is there something in there? What was that? No. We have a sheath knife here. Oh yeah, that's a that's an old Western knife. This is this is very similar to the first uh, my first hunting knife that uh, my granddad gave me. It's it's yeah that is look at that that's the boy is that not classic Americana hunting skinning knife right there leather wrapped handle all original that's really beautiful isn't it the Western knife yeah I remember that I um, I bought one uh, my granddad and I we bought, actually he. I don't remember how that was. I think I, he bought me one and then I bought him one. We had, there was one that they made that had a, a hatchet combination with a, with a knife sheath on the outside that we, and it, it was really nice because we used to carry those heavy, carry a heavy hatchet when we would uh, go elk hunting and we'd use a hatchet for splitting the pelvis when you're butchering, cutting through the, the, the girdle bone or whatever you call it. Uh, when you're quartering meat, we would use that and we, uh, we got those Western ones because they were really thin uh, and they were a lot easier to pack around hunting with all the gear. But that's really nice. That reminds me of the one granddad gave me. That's pretty cool. Oh, this looks like a this looks like a vintage plum bob. That's an old, that looks like an old one. I've always been fascinated with plumb bobs. I love the, I've got a brass one um, that was given to me years ago that I am like keeping my, oh yep, that's exactly what it is. And it's got the tip on it still. That's rare. Usually you find these and, and there's pieces missing on the tip and then you, so you, I'm not sure. Oh yes. So, so you see the reason why it's got an opening in there is you can't tie a string around a plumb bob or it will, uh, it'll hang crooked. So it has to feed down through the center. So you take a piece of mason string and you thread it down there and then tie a knot in the bottom and then pull it up. And then when it hangs, it hangs true. And this has got a hardened, it's just like Castile with a hardened threaded replaceable tip on there. That's a neat one, isn't it? That's really cool. That might be kind of eight ounces, it says. That might have to go into the, 
This is W's knickknack cabinet. I gotta, I gotta keep a toe hold in there or she'll take over. Yeah, here. Oh, look at that. That what a, what a. <laughs> that's a cutie. That's a, a Johnson. These are iconic here. These are a carpenter's clamps. Um, Johnson's, um, I believe they're made in, uh, this, they originally started in Sweden or Scandinavia. I want to show you something here. I have the big one. And I, but I've never had a little one. Look at that. These are old school. These are really nice clamps. Yep. Or Jorgensen, not Johnson, excuse me. Jorgensen, made in USA. And there's its little brother, the, the little tiny one. And they're, they're fun because you, uh, you know, they have different threads on them. So you spin them this way here to open and open and close them. That's a neat, that's a handy little clamp there just to have around. Okay. Good condition too. Who knows what we're going to, what we're going to find in here next. Now I have actually really been wanting one of these. I, I know what, do you know what this is? You see that? If I'm right, I think this, I think this is what it is. Um, so when you're stitching leather, uh, you, you can, uh, you run a, a line where you want your stitch to be, right? With, with your, like with your finger there. And you run this along the line and it makes little indentations, little holes, you know, or reference marks so you know where to put your needle. So you have a nice consistent thread and you're not some wider and some narrower. That's nice. And you can get these in in different sizes. If you want to have stitching that's further apart, they're bigger or smaller. This is a good general purpose for, for small work. But I do have, I do, I, there's some leather work that I need to do. I'll, I'll be doing some videos on that. And that's, I don't have one of these. I've been meaning to get one. So that's, that's cool. That's an old one. Oh, interesting. Interesting. So we've got, whoops, oh, careful, careful. So we've got, uh, I, I've got one of these before, and I've actually um, been using it. They're little, uh, they're little tiny drill bits for uh, with just manual drill bits with these little wooden handles on them. Isn't that cool? I'm gonna, I'll keep these in here. They're they're handy for having in the shop because you can, you know, if you just need to to just you know get a little hole started, or you know, if you're working on some delicate thing, rather than get the drill out and all that stuff, you can just grab one of these. They're handy to have on the workbench. And this, I'm assuming, is just a corkscrew. Just an old-fashioned corkscrew for, for, uh, for uh, bo uh, corks and bottles. These are nice. Wait, what an eclectic group of, or a collection of things here. Well, let's see what else we got here. We're coming to the end. I promise you. Okay, so here is a, here's a small, very traditional uh, carpenter's square, a bench square, one that you would use on the bench right there. We can test it. We can test to see if it still is square um, by, here's how you test a square. You see right there? Uh, you put it up against, not, the work, not something like a workbench. You know, my workbench is not perfectly square, but up against a sheet of plywood or melamine, something that has a factory edge on it and then you can uh, you draw a line and then you reverse it and you line it up there and you draw another line and you compare the lines if the lines are square if the lines are, are parallel together um, then that means it's square and this is absolutely square I'll exaggerate this what you'll find if they're not square when you do this and you flip them and you put them together is you'll find uh, something that looks like this see how they de deviate there they depart but that just is a test to the a test to the quality of these old tools they were really built well brass solid brass three brass inserts there quality steel great nice to have a, I don't have one of these that is in good condition and that will I'll just leave that right there that'll be part of the a part of the carpenter's bench no doubt all right what we got here oh Oh, this is really nice. How about that? Very rare. These are original, the original Stanley 750 
can see these here. The original Stanley 750 chisel handles, fa factory ones. They have, uh, they should be, look how good a condition they're in too. And they're exact, they're just twins. It's a brace of them. How about that? I have got chisels that I don't have handles for. I'll be curious to see if these fit. They're gonna be for some of the larger chisels, probably a one inch or three quarter, but they've got a, a um, you can see, I believe it's a stacked leather. I think they put a stacked leather on there uh, to soften the blow and the impact to the hand. Very rare. I probably am not going to use these. I'm pro I'll probably use these as patterns on my lathe to recreate um, handles. Because I, I haven't, the, the original ones are becoming so rare. That is neat. I wonder, that, that's really nice. Boy, some real treasure. So I have to, so people are going to ask, so uh, of all of the stuff, uh, what is your favorite, what is your favorite um, of the lot? And I'd have to say the grommet tool. The grommet tool is the, is the coolest thing. Uh, to have the whole kit with a punch. Look at that. I mean, that is a, oh, there we go. I, ha I have to have that wrong. So the grommet would go on the top, not the bottom. Look, see how it fits in there? See that? I had it upside down there. My, my apologies there. So you would put you would put your material on there. Let's say we're going to pretend that this is canvas, right? So you would take and you'd... Uh... Oh, what am I doing here? Dummy. You would uh, punch a hole. Sharp. Look at that clean hole in that plastic. You'd punch a hole in there. Then you would put your... You would probably, I'm not sure which way they would go, which way you would do it. Yeah, you'd have to be this way. Then you'd put this on here, right? Then you'd put this here. Then you'd use your mandrel like that. Is that right? And bend that over. Yeah. Yep. So, something like that. No? Huh. Yeah. I'll bet it's like that. Spur. It says spur. That's nice. Well, that is really cool. Well, thank, <clears throat> thank you, David. That is a, a really interesting. This is neat. That's a really interesting uh, set of things. This will have a, <clears throat> a prominent place over here on the, with the collection. Um, uh, thank you for these nice gifts. So this was really fun. I hope you enjoyed the video and and it's uh, I'll us uh, I'll uh, read this letter here. Uh, off air. But that's it. That's all I have. And uh, we'll see you guys. Hope you enjoyed the video. Don't forget to click the thumbs up and uh, we'll see you guys in the next video.